Hi folks, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. Today I want to take a look at a paper from the very recently concluded conference on operating systems design and implementation. And this I thought was a really interesting look at how you would build and architect an operating system if you could do it in a language like Rust. As I was thinking about how to best explain this paper, I felt like it would be good to focus on the two or three main points behind this design and architecture and to explain it by contrasting it against two other systems. The first one is the architecture of traditional kernels like Linux and the second is another research OS called Singularity which also uses language-based mechanisms for operating system safety. I've covered Singularity in another video on this channel and I'll link it in the description. If you think about how you would leverage a safe language like Rust to write an operating system, one of the key things that it enables you to do is to shift a lot of responsibility from hardware and checking at runtime into the compiler. So a lot of things that are checked at runtime and that use hardware support are now checked at compile time. And we'll see some concrete examples of this in a bit. One main goal of this design was to make the operating system more robust and more fault tolerant. A very common way in which this kind of brittleness shows up in traditional operating systems is via what the authors call state spill. State spill typically happens when the kernel holds states of interactions with many clients in a central place. A common example is the kernel holding a table of open file handles or the kernel holding a global table of memory management information. The problem with this kind of global holding of state is that if there's a bug or a crash in one specific application or even in the kernel itself, it takes down the entire system rather than just that one buggy or crashy application. And if you look at how to contain this issue of state spill, it boils down to how you isolate and transfer and control the lifetime of shared information between operating system components. This is what drew the authors to Rust. Rust has a very interesting ownership model which can be leveraged very effectively to minimize state spill and to architect a robust operating system. Now, I don't want to cover a full intro to the Rust programming language here, but a lot of the rest of this paper basically falls out of the properties of the Rust programming language. So let's just take a quick look at some of the key ideas. The main idea is that of ownership. Now in Rust, every value has an owner. For example, this string hello is owned by this variable called hello. And each variable like this has a lifetime that is bounded by lexical scope. That means over here on line eight, when hello falls out of scope, Rust invokes something called a drop handler and automatically deallocates this hello string. If you were to try and reference this hello value outside the lifetime of its ownership, that would give you an error. That would give you a compile time error, more importantly. You can get references to values, which is called borrowing, but most importantly, the lifetime of these borrowed references cannot be longer than the lifetime of the owned value. And the Rust borrow checker enforces this at compile time. And Rust is a type and memory safe language which enforces these guarantees at compile time. It doesn't have any garbage collection. All this is done purely statically. This means you don't have to worry about things like buffer overflows or stack smashing and so on. And this brings us to the first main architectural difference between this operating system, which by the way they call Theseus, and traditional kernels, which is that all of Theseus runs in a single address space and a single privilege level. Unlike, for example, in Linux, where the kernel runs in a privileged address space and then all of user land runs in a lesser privileged address space. Traditional operating systems also use hardware support 
they use the chip's memory management unit to provide runtime memory safety so that for example a user space program cannot go read the memory of another program or read the memory of the kernel but since this entire operating system is written in rust which has compile time memory and type safety guarantees you do not need all that hardware level protection at compile time you know that your code is guaranteed to be memory and type safe. So you don't need different privilege levels. You don't need different address spaces. It all just runs in one address space at a single privilege level. The unit of modularity in Theseus is what the authors call a cell. And a cell has clear bounds that persist all the way from compile time to runtime. When you're writing code, a cell exists as a crate, which is the unit in which Rust code is packaged. It becomes a single object file when you compile it and you load that object file and instantiate it into memory. And when you do that, it has specific bounds and you have some other dependency metadata in it because cells can depend on other cells. And importantly, every piece of functionality in Theseus is a cell. There are no exceptions for special kernel images or other low level behavior. So running in a single address space at a single privilege level was the first main architectural differentiator of Theseus. And now we come to the second one, which is a byproduct of Theseus leveraging Rust to the fullest extent possible. And that is you can use the compiler itself to maintain many of the resource management responsibilities that are typically done at runtime and done explicitly by other kernels. For example, when you need to pass or share information between two components, you can use Rust's built-in reference types and Rust's capabilities such as reference counted pointers. And then this information can be shared in a safe manner instead of passing around raw pointers or playing games with page tables and so on. This is really nice because it eliminates a whole class of errors, things like use after free errors, because they simply get checked at compile time. And what enables this kind of rich checking of guarantees is what the authors call lossless interfaces, which basically just means that when you're sharing resources, you maintain all their language level semantics and metadata. For example, in Linux, if you want to pass data from user space into kernel space or vice versa, you basically just pass a pointer and then the kernel has to do a safe copy into kernel space. And then when it does whatever it needed to do as part of a system call or whatever, it then has to do a safe copy out back into user space. But basically what the kernel and user space see of each other is just chunks of raw memory. In Theseus, on the other hand, since they're leveraging Rust to the fullest extent possible, you have richer type information. You have information about an item's lifetime and you have information about an item's ownership or borrowed status. And again, all these things are important properties that Rust is checking for you at compile time. I'm going to skip over a lot of details in the interest of keeping this video short, but if you're interested in this, I'd really recommend reading the full paper. I want to jump ahead to what this kind of architecture really enables. How do you see this kind of robustness and fault tolerance in practice? And the way you get to see it in action is by changing the system in fundamental ways at runtime. So Theseus has this mechanism called cell swapping, which can at runtime replace functionality of old cells and move them into newer cells. This cell swapping mechanism enables some very interesting live evolution use cases which simply wouldn't be possible in other kernels. You'd need to basically reboot the whole system. So for example, they went from a simple 
synchronous unbuffered intertask communication mechanism to one that was asynchronous and buffered which is a pretty substantial change in functionality and in their tests they were able to do this at a random point while messages were still in flight so i think that's pretty impressive another example is where they changed the ethernet driver at runtime so real quick before we wrap up how is theseus different from Singularity, which is another similar system which looked at how to build an operating system in C Sharp and .NET. And Singularity also has a single address space and a single privilege level because it uses what they call software-based isolation. So they do use software-based mechanisms for memory and type safety instead of using hardware mechanisms. However, as the authors here point out, Theseus goes much deeper because they really try to leverage Rust as much as possible. So this lets Theseus check many more resource specific invariants and check them at compile time with language-based mechanisms compared to singularity. So that was a quick look at an operating system called Theseus, which is a really interesting design point in how you would design an OS in a type-safe language like Rust, especially using its ownership and borrowing semantics. I hope you enjoyed that, and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.